dim in here. This looks dim. Okay, I'll go ahead and get started. <coughs> yeah, they're messing with these videos. But it's all good. The Lord is drying up the channels of living water. The Lord is doing that. Bringing in a famine. <coughs> Shalom. Barak Atanya Howard. Barak Atanya Howard. Brock the Yahoo. Brock the Yahoo shine. Call him Lame Lot. Yahoo. Bahashem Yahoo shine. Bahashem. Rick Clock and Dash. To the 144,000. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Finger on the trigger. <clears throat> Much love, honor, respect to the elect of the house of Israel, of the house of David. To the beloved, Aquaf, listening and learning in meekness and humility, as the scriptures have commanded to do so. To you, we say, Shalom, a rock and thumb. So many of you have seen the videos on people crying because their savior <laughs> did not get elected into the White House, not realizing that presidents are se selected, not elected. You got women crying all over the place. I can no longer ride the cock carousel and then unalive my child. You know, this goes to show you that the Lord is justified and just making this place a massive cemetery. And I'm not talking about spirit, spiritually either. I'm gonna have to make this short. This is gonna become a massive cemetery. Here it is, you crying because you can't unalive babies and continue to ride the cock carousel. This is the society we live in today, okay? This is what we're dealing with. First of all, the Electoral College decide who's going to be selected, which is predetermined. They're given marching orders from the top, starting with the international bankers. And then they got lobbyists to keep, <laughs> to keep their thumb on you if you're a, a, a selected leader. You got the oil lobbyists. You got the gun lobbyists. You got the pharmaceutical lobbyists because they've invested in your campaign. So they own you. 
So you better damn well be prepared to go to another war so that they can get their return on their investments. Okay? This is how it works. You're not just determining who's going in office. They look at the American people as worthless eaters, uninitiated. You're not sighted. You're not initiated or read on to what the international elites are doing. <clears throat> so there's some scriptures that I want to do. you got to be initiated to decide who's going to be selected, the whole office, which is a corporate position. America is a corporate or a corporation that is governed under maritime law, universal law, laws of merchandise and merchant trade governs this corporation. It's not a sovereign nation. Let's go to Psalms. <clears throat> Psalms. 118 and 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 118, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endure forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endure forever. So, that's salvation to the Lord's people, the Israelites. That is who is going to be set up as the next government. Everything works by predestination. There really is no election other than what has been predetermined. The Lord has an election process. You think you're going to vote to decide who is going to be elect? No, that comes from the, the holder of the power. Remember, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So they were given that authority. Nobody voted who's going to be ruling the earth in the last days. The 13 Illuminati families. How many had a say so in what devil was going to rule over us in what district? It doesn't work that way. Everything is spiritual. Yeah, I posted that scripture earlier. Let's go there. <coughs> Not going to be able to make this long. Let's go there. Psalms 146. Look at Psalms chapter 146, verse 2. While I live, while I Praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have my being. <coughs> while I have breath in my body. While I live, while I praise the Lord, I will sing praises unto my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man whom there is no help. See? So these are the dukes of Edom that are ruling the earth right now. They're, they don't care about anybody other than their bloodlines, which is through their men, the Amalekites. This is why the Bible says that the Lord will have war with Amalek for ever. So they know that. So they're already condemned. And this is why they intermingle and intermarry amongst themselves. And they know that they come back through their sons. While I live, while I praise the Lord, I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. See? So everything is ordained through the Spirit. We can't be saved by flesh. We can't be saved by someone that was already pre-selected.
See, there is no such thing as equality. Every kingdom has a hierarchy, have nobles and subjects. Every kingdom has a order, rank and file. You got trillionaires, a certain amount in every region. You got billionaires, a certain amount in every region. You got millionaires. They're prescribed in certain numbers in every region. And then underneath them, you have an upper middle class, then a middle class, and then the laborers, the servants. That's every kingdom. So you're not able to get out of that lot on your own power. This is why, ooh, the rich man and poor man, there was a moat that separated them between each other. They were not able to cross that moat where the, where the rich man was brought low. He could not cross over into uh, the nobility. And neither could the rich man, well, neither could the poor man go back to peasant class. There was a moat separating the two. And somebody can post that, which is showing us that there are lots that we cannot operate beyond the hard wiring or the lot that we were given. Psalms 146 and 3. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth. Hey, you, you keep posting stuff with no chapter and no verse. Okay, just hold your peace if you're not serious. You're just putting stuff up there with no chapter and no verse. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, and that very day his thoughts perish. So these are just temporary, just temporary little, let's go ahead, let's get it. Let's go here to, um, I think it's in James. They're small vapors. That's the word I'm looking for. They're little temporary vapors that are going to perish away. Let's go here. I think it's in, um, I'll look for it. Let me look it up. Yeah, James 4 and 14. Let's read that one. The book of James, chapter 4, we're going to go to 14. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 14. Let's go to 13. No, we got to go to 12. James 4 and 12. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy so we're not going to get deliverance on this side by people that hate us. Every year, the taxes go up every year. Then they print more money. So this is a never-ending cycle of debt, that the slave debt system, an old age-old art, art. It's a slave debt system, usury or interest. So you never own anything. This year, your taxes double. Next year, they triple. So you're in a constant cycle of debt, which is, in it, which is telling you indirectly you are a slave. Every year, everything goes up, showing that we have no worth here, no value. This is why the spirit, in endeavoring on a spiritual walk, is a treasure. That's the value, which is wisdom. James 4 and 12. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. 
Who art thou that judgest another? Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appear for a little time, and then vanishes away. See? Okay, I'm getting ready to stop this right now. They're doing all kinds of fuckboy stuff with these videos and sending bots. So that vapor is trusting on the flesh, man, rather than the immortal, the eternal, which is the kingdom of heaven, ultimately, but it starts with the doctrine. Let's go back to that. Psalms 146. Psalms chapter 146. Verse 3, put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, and that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose help is in the Lord his God. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. So our help is in the Lord. We're not going to get help by those that have everything through death. Whitewashing history. Whitewashing the judges. The Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Whitewashing the Most High's image. And then putting themselves up in power. And then every year... <coughs> devaluing your property, inflating or creating artificial artificial debt by inflation and mass production or mass producing dollars in the system. So what it does is it creates a worthless dollar. So this is a rat race. Show me where voting has changed anything. Everything is getting more expensive to live. We're paying more for groceries, more to live in housing, more to buy a house, more to buy a car, more to put a kid through school. School should be free if it's for the betterment of the society. So why are we paying more to live? Because we're not living. This is not life. Let's go back to Psalms. 118, Psalms 118, verse 4, let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endure forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. So the chariots are round about the saints, prepostured, ready to, to go. All chaos. There's another electoral college meeting on the 17th of December. So nothing is guaranteed right now. All hell can break loose. Executive powers can be activated. And another thing that can be activated is called, I'm trying to think of the name, emergency powers. Let's read something. It's called a loaded weapon. The premise, emergency powers, right here. The premise underlining emergency powers is simple. The government's ordinary power might be insufficient in a crisis and amending the law to provide greater ones 
might be too slow and cumbersome. So emergency powers are meant to give the government a temporary boost until the emergency passes or there is time to change the law through a normal <coughs> legislative process. So all hell can break loose. A massive national emergency can be declared. It can be a, a blackout. The grid can go out. <coughs> No more ships coming into the port to deliver water, food, massive fighting breaking loose throughout the streets, and the National Guard being overwhelmed. Then you got the United Nations getting involved because you're messing with their money. This is a corporate business. This is why you have a president that is pre-selected. Hey, keep your eyes open, Bob Kashan. I'm glad we got another moderator. All types of niggas pop up whenever you go live. So I appreciate the help. So, yeah, there was a, um, I'm looking at Facebook. I don't interact on Facebook. And this uh, chick that I went to school with, graduated with, long drawn out summary. Now we see how these people feel about us. I can't believe they didn't let this woman or support this woman. You know, you're putting your trust in someone that cannot save you. All right? First of all, it, it, the bets are not off the table yet. I mean, <laughs> we can go into a national emergency within a 24-hour period. That's all it takes or less. In less than 24 hours. I'm going to go there. Let's go here. Unlike the modern constitutions of many other countries, which specify when and how a state of emergency may be declared and which rights may be suspended. Which rights may be suspended. So they're showing you your home is not your home all, all the while. This is why every year the taxes go up. They can occupy your property and use your vehicles to transport the troops for medical and emergency operations and transport of logistics. Your vehicles become government vehicles. And which rights may be suspended. The U.S. Constitution, the U.S. Constitution itself includes no comprehensive separate regime for emergencies. Those few powers it does contain for dealing with certain urgent threats it assigns to Congress, not the President. For example, it lets the Congress suspend the writ of habeas corpus. That is, it allows the government officials to imprison people without due process of law or without judicial review. So you can be thrown in prison, all right? Guilty until proven innocent. There is no due process. They can just lock you up. We suspect that you're aiding and abiding or harboring or hiding transgressors or law violators. So we're going to roll up everybody in this community here, in the neighborhood. Everybody in this district is getting rolled up and hauled off to a concentration camp. So many people think this is a game. <clears throat> For instance, it lets Congress suspend the writ of habeas corpus. So the national, the federal police take over local police duties. Now they're working with them alongside them, but they have jurisdiction over them. Everything gets federalized. A federal police force is the first sign of a totalitarian style of government. 
or you had to nationalize the police or national police force. It allows it allows Congress to suspend the writ of habeas corpus. That is, allows government officials to imprison people without judicial review when in cases of rebellion or invasion, the public safety may require it and provide calling and provide calling for the militia to execute the laws of the union, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions. So now you can deputize citizens, those that are pro-federal government, pro-national security interests. You see, now they're deputized. So everybody becomes a censor, your neighbors. You see, the people down the street, the people you work with, co-workers. So now you have censors on, in every district and on every block. The militia to execute the laws of the union to suppress insurrections and repel <laughs> invasions. So this is what's coming. Where you're going to see district and regional violence across the districts and regions. So it's going to blur the lines of local, district, and national jurisdiction because everything is going to be federalized anyway. Nonetheless, some legal scholars believe that the Constitution gives the president inherent emergency powers by making him commander-in-chief of the armed forces or by vesting in him abroad undefined executive power undefined, so it becomes limitless. At key points in American history, presidents have cited inherent constitutional powers when taking drastic actions that were not authorized or in some cases were explicitly prohibited. We're going to get an example which were explicitly inhibited by Congress. Notorious examples include President Franklin D. Roosevelt's internment of the United States citizens and residents of the Japanese descent during World War II. See? So they were just putting people in internment facilities that were deemed anti-government. So this is happen this is going to happen again. So these are examples of the government or the federal government led by executive powers of the commander in chief <coughs> to exercise that authority under the guise of public safety and protection of national security. See? So it's called Emergency Powers Act under the notorious Franklin D. Roosevelt's internment of the United States citizens and residents of Japanese descent during World War II and George Bush programs of warrantless wiretapping and torture after the 911 terrorist attacks, Abraham Lincoln conceded that his unilateral suspension of habeas corpus during the Civil War was constitutionally questionable, but defended it as necessary to preserve the Union. And President Lincoln went on record saying, if I could have preserved, if I could have preserved the Union, Without freeing the slaves, I would have done so. But he freed the slaves, which really didn't free them. It transferred ownership from the South to the North. So 
when the Civil War was about corporate interests. It was about ownership of stock. Remember, the Southern Confederate States of the South became the fourth largest economic industry in the world. And here it is, the North was not doing so good. And they could not tax the slaves. They, they could not properly count them. So they had to institute a census, a national census, because they were buying and trading and selling slaves and becoming more and more powerful economically in the South. So, <laughs> so it was about ownership of commodities, of land, of wealth. And it transferred that wealth to the wicked international bankers in the North. That's what it was about. It was not about slavery. Yeah, let's go here. Brother Aramia, Isaiah 30 and 1. <clears throat> Isaiah 30 and 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with a covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So many people are covered in the belief of their system, believing that they can be covered under the shadow of the wings of the eagle and not under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty. Salvation, deliverance, protection, being changed, being preserved in the days of sin, perils, massive death, sickness, and wars. They don't believe in that. So they're just trying to rack and stack wealth, riches, and the protection under the federal interests federal agencies. Hey, CPS is one of them. Child support. You see, WIC, EBT, that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So they're trusting on death. They're trusting on temporary vapors, false promises, man, flesh, that cannot save. Gods that really have no breath in them, which is the wisdom from the heavenly realm. So they're chasing on puppets that are being pulled by the international bankers, the global elite. Let's go here. Let's go back to Psalms 118. <clears throat> Same thing happened to Issachar. Yeah. All the tribes. Yep. You know, every time this man made a promise, he broke his promise. So how can you trust on a system? This man broke over 600 peace treaties. But yet, you're going to trust a promise of making America great. When America was great, then you had the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans just flooding the plantations, picking cotton, tobacco, the sugar fields, the sugar cane fields, the rubber industry, the sugar cane fields, the cotton plantation fields. So what are you talking about? So that greatness hinge on making people subjects that are not amongst the international banking elite. Everybody else became subjects. Even during the, uh, Francis Bacon Rebellion. You had lower or poor whites joining with Native Americans and Negroes to fight the major landowners. So after the Francis Bacon Rebellion, they began to classify people based on color. 
white, then you can vote, you can testify in court, you can own firearms, you can purchase land. See? So they divided and conquered the people through divisive techniques. Very divisive. You see, if you're white, now you can testify in court. Now you can buy land. Not just the international bank and landowners. <coughs> so now, now you can have a piece of the pie. You see, you can purchase massive tracts of land. Testify in court. Own firearms. You see, you could vote. You could vote, which gave you the illusion of having a voice or say so. But the major stockholders, the major power brokers are the international elite, the small heads, the small heads. So they just gave you a little piece of the pie to make you feel included. So the Francis Bacon Rebellion it changed the strategy. Now it's more deceptive. Now the slavery is more codified through tax codes, usury. Everything carries interest now. Wow. Let's go here. I'm going to get ready to end this in a minute. Psalms 118. For the Psalms 118, verse 5. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. That's salvation. The great fathership, a star out of Jacob. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? So through the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, there is no fear of the flesh, but in tune or in harmony with the spirit, which is all powerful, all knowing, immortal. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. Therefore will I see my desire upon them that hate me. See? The Bible says that you're going to see the destruction of your enemies. Is that not written? <clears throat> it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. See? See? So the wicked global elite are in rulership right now. They control the supply lines. They control the supply channel. They control the inflation. They're gaming the pricing. They control violence where they can raise the prices. So they have this floating monetary value unjust balances or they can just manipulate the market inside trading raising the violence levels and chaos and speculation so the entire market is based on speculation well I think the cost <coughs> of gold is going to go up or I think the cost of pork belly is going to go up so I'm going to put my money here. So it's just constant moving the goalposts. A rat race when you can never get ahead. Because it's smoke and mirrors. It's an illusion. And you got women crying that they can no longer unalive babies and ride the cop carousel. All right? You must be out of your damn mind. Trusting in a system that's built on blood. It needs blood to fuel this system. What do you think the lobbyists are for at these funding, these presidential campaigns? You see, the oil and petroleum lobbyists, the gun lobbyists, the ammunition lobbyists, the drug lobbyists, because they want to see more sickness 
They need blood to fuel their economic long-term investment interests. And they need wars so they can get their return on their investment of funding your $200 million presidential campaign. Yep, Brother Aramia, they home three and one. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. So this system needs bloodshed to keep its fuel or to keep this place fueled or running. It runs on blood. That's what it needs. Matter of fact, let's go here to prove that. Yeah, it's in debt, but the monetary debt is a byproduct of the massive bloodshed. Let's go here. Habakkuk 2. Habakkuk 2. Habakkuk 2 and 7. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee and thou shall be booties unto them. So all nations are seeing that this place is built on theft, robbery, and deception. Verse 8, because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood. Say what? Because of men's blood and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. So America runs on blood. It needs the wars. These lobbyists that funded your campaign, they're looking for their check. Where's their check? You see, the front companies, McDonnell Douglas, but everything is under... It's got Blackstone, if I'm not mistaken. Blackstone, and there's another one. If somebody can put that on there, I've, I've done a lesson on it in the past. There's two major monopolies uh, controlled by the international bankers of the um, Illuminati, the 13 Illuminati families. I think Blackstone is one of them, and Vanguard. Vanguard and Blackstone, or Blackrock, that's it. BlackRock and Vanguard, two major monopolies. Let's read this again. Everything else is a subsidiary or a subcategory of those two where it branches out. Yep, Black, BlackRock and Vanguard. That's right. Yep. Have a good two, verse eight. So these nations are figuring out they've been robbed. They've been given fiat currency or promissory notes. That's what the dollar is, a promissory note. And it's back on your faith in it, your belief that it's gonna stay strong. But it's not backed by gold and silver. It's a promissory note. But yet they're taking your natural resources. That's the real wealth. Your lithium, your copper, your silver, your oil, your gold, your silver. All of these things they're taking, but they're giving you a promissory note. I pay you back. I pay you. I pay you back. Here, take this Federal Reserve notes. Unbelievable. And then when these nations don't comply, they die. Then you wage war and economic sanctions. So they're catching on to the bullshit. They're like, wait a minute, we've been robbed. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for the violence of the land and of the city and of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house that he may set his nest on high 
that he may be delivered from the power of evil. So that, that power of evil is coming from the most high. Yeah, I'll get you on the next one. All right, I know I owe you. I pay you back. And that's what a Negro does. If they ain't doing damn well, he ain't going to pay you. He saw the real nigga. I'm just telling you straight up. Give a damn what Eve says. He the real nigga. This man has stolen everybody's resources. Told me, I'll, I'll hit me back. Hit me back, you know? You told me hit me back 10 years ago, nigga. I want my money. Unbelievable. Hit me back. Or I'll hit you back, you know? Unbelievable. Let's go here. Yup. Proverbs 11 and 1. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Beautiful. <laughs> Let's get ready to close out. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious, man. Brother Tazadakta Banya Howard, Isaiah 33 and 1. Woe to thee that spoilest and thou was not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. See? So these nations now are ramping up. The Lord is raising up these nations in the east. The beasts from the east, or the BRICS alliance, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, you see? And you got several African nations joining that alliance. So the Lord is reassembling a small semblance or shadow of the ancient Medo-Persian alliance is what he's doing. This is a shadow or a semblance of that historical alliance that took down ancient Babylon. So now we're seeing instant replay of these nations coming together, led by a captain, which is God, Magog, what we call Russia, which breaks down in the Hebrew, <laughs> Russia, chief prince, chief prince. <clears throat> Yep. Where do I want to go next? Now let's read this. Surat 14 and 3. Riches are not comely for a niggard. And what should an envious man do with money? So a niggard is a, is a treacherous person. The more wealth they get, they don't do good with it. The Bible says do good or give to a godly man. Uh, here's the thing too. Mercy is doing good to somebody that's doing good. That's doing something with themselves. As the old folks say. What if I went into a drug infested. You got to break stuff down for Jake. Because Jake is too goddamn emotional. If I went into a drug infested neighborhood. And I said, hey, I'm the savior. I'm going to give everybody $100,000 a piece. What do you think would happen? What do you think would happen? They're going to buy more drugs, more guns, and more ammunition. So what you're going to do is fund uh, barbarians. You're going to have territorial drug lords that are funded by you, dumbass. So now you've just You've exacerbated or made worse by throwing money at the problem. You can't fix shit. You can't just throw money at a problem or put sprinkles on shit. It's still shit. So it has to be an internal cleansing, which is a spiritual sanctification, being renewed. You can't just throw money at a problem that are not trying to do good. That if they're cleaning, if they're doing good, Spreading the gospel, the right doctrine, you see, um, warning of the dangers and the perils to come. Empowering the men to take back charge of the household. So you got no more delinquent kids. 
No more drug dealers. No more gangbangers. But that comes through the spiritual indoctrination. It cannot occur through the flesh. But all you've done is empowered drug lords by thinking you can fix the neighborhood or fix the community. You can't do it from a carnal means or secular process. <clears throat> Let's read that again. Jake gives a nigga a million dollars and be like, I'm a good man because I just gave him a million dollars. He's not doing anything with it. By robbing little kids for bags. That's it. So you just empowered a new kingpin. A new drug lord. Congratulations. So right, 14 and 3. Riches are not comely for a niggar. And what should an envious man do with money? So that's... <laughs> That's evil E, but he has minions following after his ways. Many Israelites trust in this man's system, in his ways. Let's close out here. <clears throat> Luke 21. So when we give, it's tied to our faith. So that means we're given to a Faithful cause. Oh, I got to say that again. When we're giving, we're giving based on our faith. So that means our giving must be connected to a faithful cause. The true doctrine, the gospel, the ministry, prophecy, promises that are coming, the reward of the kingdom. Not just throwing a million dollars at a nigga or some gangbangers. You know, riding bicycles with backpacks and 9 millimeter guns with damn bandanas tied around their head. That's bugged out. Talking about I'm a philanthropist. No, you're a ventriloquist. Bugged out of your goddamn mind. You ain't no damn philanthropist. You're a ventriloquist. A damn puppet master. Let's go to Luke 21 and close out here. Luke 21. Now the context here is um, 70 AD. <coughs> but everything, it replays itself. Because Yahweh Shai also projects into the future. Are not the 12 tribes still scattered? Yes. <coughs> Luke 21. Verse 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. <laughs> so the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. You see, massive chaos and turmoil, massive sickness and bloodshed and Neighbors fighting against one another. I mean, a full onslaught. A full onslaught. When you see a neighborhood fighting, it's bloody and unfair. You might be running across the street to go grab your two-year-old toddler and a bullet strikes you while your two-year-old is watching you bleed out. You see... The only, only ones that are going to be stable in times of civil war are the Lord's elect. That's it. Everybody else is going to lose their mind. So the signs are going to precede the coming of Yahweh Shai. So it's prophecy and it's also going to be <laughs> signs that we're going to be able to look up and see. And a part of that is these nations waging war against one another. Full-scale war. Verse 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven 
shall be shaken. These international elite losing their grip, losing their stronghold. They're already losing it. Most people know the election process is bullshit. Okay, a bunch of lobbyists that funded your $200 million campaign. Now they're looking for you to wage the next war so they can get a return on their investments. Like Lockheed Martin, McDonnell Douglas. Okay? What's the, uh, just to name a few. So a man's heart failing them for fear. Cardiac arrests, heart attacks. This is literal. And their mind. Mental breakdowns. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Salvation is, is near. Salvation is at stake. <laughs> so the stakes are high to be delivered out from underneath that man who was given the gift of the power of the sword. <laughs> well, you think King David was smoking crack when he said, deliver me, O Lord, from the wicked, which is thy sword. No, he was not smoking crack. He was speaking through the spirit of Yahweh Shai. And then, shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth not. See, let's go to Psalms 143. <laughs> <coughs> Psalms 143, verse 11. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. So that quickening is the spiritual enlightenment. So at one time being asleep, but then being woken up to the truth. That's a spiritual lightning, enlightening of the eyes, which is spiritual. That third eye, so to speak. Let's read that again. So that cloud that's coming is your Shai. <clears throat> Psalms 143 and 11. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. For I am thy servant. That's heavy. If you're not amongst the elect, you still got your mouth wide open with flies then turned your tongue into a damn airstrip, an airport, a landing pad, bug out of your damn mind, walking around bumping into old people and stuff. Bug out. You staggering like a drunken man staggers in his own vomit. That's why it's best to just be quiet and trap those flies in your damn mouth. That's most of our men, the two thirds. See, coming, son of man coming in a cloud. That cloud is the father ship. <laughs> Somebody post a star out of Jacob. Shall come. That's the great father ship what they call a starship. Psalms 118, verse 5. I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. This is not talking about the Taj Mahal or the Trump Towers. You know, Taj Mahal or the damn Trump Towers. <laughs> I'm in a large place. You said large place. Well, I'm not talking about no carnal means. The Lord is coming. It's right here. So this is what he's talking about in Luke. Let's read that. Brother Tazadot, Numbers 24 and 17. Talking about the Trump Towers. You're in a large room. You must be out of your damn mind. I want some of what you're smoking. I want some of that. 
No, I'm just joking. Numbers 24 and 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, a star ship. This is, looks like a mountain to the beloved brother and prophet Ezra. He was like, what the hell? It looked like a mountain penetrating the skies. It was unbelievable. They showed us in the movie Independence Day. It's not little green men from Mars. You lying devil. Numbers 24 and 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy the children of Sheth. That's the United Nations, the children of Sheth. All these nations join together. Okay, under this beast system. Remember, Moab, the so-called Chinese, they're part of the BRICS alliance. You think that's by accident? No, it's not by accident. <laughs> I think I got room for one more. Not doing too good. Let's go to Isaiah 19. Isaiah 19 and 1, the burden of Egypt. This is spiritual Egypt here. Whenever you look at America, all it did was absorb all of the ancient empires and kingdoms into a melting pot. And they got cooked and merged with all these different ancient rituals on black magic and the ancient druids and the ancient Persian black priests, you know, the ancient Roman priests, the ancient Celtics, okay, the warlocks and witches all join unto one. They having a fest, a fest day here. This is a festival. Nothing but witches and warlocks. Just we're having a party, you know, they just living it up. Ancient Egyptian black magic. Is practiced here. Ancient uh, Medo Persian black magic, you name it. The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. Heart attacks. So this, this. Pompous spirit, the heart of Egypt. It has a proud or a pompous spirit. Well, I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. Nothing can stop the U.S. Air Force. You see, so that's the spirit of, I got this, you know? I got this, I made it. Built on bloodshed and deceit and treachery and robbery. Everything we eat messes with our mind. So it all goes back to these ancient recipes that they've put together with the Food and Drug Administration married to the pharmaceutical drug industry. Matter of fact, that word pharmakia means magic or uh, witchcraft, excuse me. Pharmakia means witchcraft. That's why a lot of our men are bugged out, you know? Crying because, you know, Kabbalah, Kabbalah didn't make it. And you crying. May the Lord turn you into canary feed or, or parrot feed, bird food. Unbelievable. And you crying because uh, the witch didn't make it. The wicked witch of the West. You must be out of your damn mind. Well, see, that's most of our people. So that swift cloud is the great chariot ship. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. <laughs> so there's going to be a civil war break out here. I mean, anything could happen. They could stop the transition of power to the presidential elect. 
All it takes is the declaration of a national emergency, executing the Emergency Powers Act. Or Biden could just go into the spirit world. Next thing you know, you got the, the woman or the wicked witch of the West, Kabbalah. Kabbalah Harris. Yeah, no, who's next? Now she's it. It's just any, many things can occur. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. And they shall fight every one against his brother. And every one against his neighbor. City against city and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof. And I will destroy the council thereof. And they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to the wizards. So the leaders here, in order to make it here, you must be initiated. You must go through some very extremely compromising predicaments and be video recorded so you can be trusted by some great high level freaks. So you're not going to make it here. That's why every time I hear clout, he's chasing clout. My brain is hardwired to not be able to understand what you mean. There is no clout here. Okay, you got to be able to, your backside got to be the size of a manhole cover. If you're a man and you're going to, I made it here, I made it. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Or if you're a woman, you've been in many compromising predicaments to become a priestess or a witch, then you got to go through some very seductive, disgusting rituals. I'm not going to even go into it. So to just be bragging that you made it, why do you think a lot of them are drugged up? Because they know in their conscience they've sold their soul to the devil. That's why a lot of them, I'd rather stay drugged up every damn day. I can't deal with what I did. I told everybody I had a damn miscarriage when my baby was sacrificed to, to Moloch, okay? Whether it had been a, a, a Persian magical ritual or ancient Egyptian black magic ritual, we don't know and we really don't care. That's between you and the Most High. But my point being, I wrestle with here and he's chasing clout or she's chasing clout. You got to really give up your soul to make it here. Anyway, hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to you. How about Hashem, how about By Hashem, or Kwakadash. The water for posting scriptures helping to edify the body and feed the lambs. And the water for tuning in. Okay, give to the faithful. And this is what our faith leads us to do, to give to the faithful, those that are like-minded, in charity and sacrifice and labors. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Call me a Shirella and the Bob the Bob. What you got next, Lord willing? <laughs> Barack the Thumb. Shalom. The water, you have a bunch of shit, you have a shot. Shalom.